Welcome back to the second issue of the day. It is 15 days after the hashtag NSAS protest ended in a bloodbath as men of the Nigerian army allegedly shot at unarmed protesters, killing at least 12 in what Amnesty International has described as barbaric and a clear violation of human rights. To investigate this, a Lagos judicial panel was set up by the Lagos state governor, Babajide Sonwulu. Now, the panel at its fourth sitting on Tuesday received CCTV footage submitted by the Lekki Concession Company, LCC. But the company is alleging that the camera stopped working at 8 p.m. right before the shooting. This claim is generating a lot of controversy as the LCC is being accused of withholding vital information on the Lekki killings. To discuss this, we have um, still in our studio the public affairs, and, I mean, now is a public affairs analyst. <laughs> That's Adini Kunu. But before he gives us his opening comment, let's quickly take a look at this report. Plots TV Africa, Annette Felix was at that sitting, and here is our report. Sit down! Let's just sit down! Sit down! Sit down where you are! Many remember the 20th of October 2020 as a dark day in Nigeria's history. On that day, unknown gunmen in army uniform allegedly shot at protesters guarded at the Lekki toll gate. The Nigerian army initially described the viral videos as fake news, but later backtracked after 81 Division confirmed that army officers were invited by the Lagos state government to quell the tension, but did not shoot at the protesters. Amnesty International has continued to insist that 12 people died. To probe the events of that night, the Lagos state government set up this eight-man panel. Members are tasked to investigate the lecky shootings of October 20th and address the grievances of victims of abuses by members of the disbanded Special Anti-Robbery Squad, SARS. After hearing the testimony of victims of SARS abuses, the managing director of the Lekki Concession Company, LCC, Abayomi Omomua, is called up to answer questions about the alleged removal of cameras at the toll before the shootings. We never ever tamper with that surveillance camera. And as we will probably will see in the footage, that's why the footage, you can still get the footage. It remains there until about some, some time later in the day around 8 o'clock when it was tampered with and we couldn't get any, any network anymore. Some legal practitioners have expressed their displeasure with the questioning process of the LCCMD. The Council for Legal State Government was asking questions as if it was the Council for LCC. I would have expected a more muscular response from the, from, from, from the panel. Today's hearing on SARS-related abuses lasted for almost four hours. During the hearing, the managing director of the Lekki Concession Center, Abayomi Omomowa, presented a camera surveillance footage of the events of Tuesday, October 20th, 2020, now referred to allegedly as the Lekki Togit shootings or massacre. Now, the court has adjourned hearing to November 6th, that's Friday this week, because they say they do not have the facilities to examine the camera footage. Annette Felix, PLOS TV Africa. Okay, that was a report put together by our correspondent, Annette Felix. Now, that is just to um, elucidate on that uh, introduction that I read out. So, let's look at um, the explanation. You know, it started from the cameras were switched off, the lights were switched off, now we have the camera footage. But my worry is, 8 p.m., I think a lot of damage had been done by that time. Most definitely. So why is there hula baloo everywhere? Well, I think that um, if you look at the records now, uh, on the side of the government, the Lagos State government and the Nigerian military, their inconsistencies have shown that there are certain things they want to hide from all that had happened from their side. Um, until Amnesty International brought 
uh, the detailed, you know, timely accounts of the, when the yes, army moved. Yes, the timelines and the rest. We found that the army had debunked the fact that it's fake news that they were there. They have denied that they ever sent somebody. Later on, the army said they were called in to assist by the Lagos State government. So that alone, if I were to be a judge, the inconsistency shows that the Nigerian army is guilty and they are trying to hide something because they've been inconsistent like three or four times. If we also do an analysis of what the Lagos State government has been bringing out, particularly Babajide Sonwolu, it also shows inconsistency. It therefore means that the Lagos State government is also hiding something. So if I were to be a judge, based on their utterances and their inconsistencies, I'm also going to dock the Lagos State government. That's one part. Now let's go to the scene of the incident. Um, in the midst of that, don't forget that it was a protest that I covered, both at Lekki and, of course, at Ikeja. And it's also a protest that I was there the morning after. And I can tell you that um, at the period of the protest, I didn't see anything to have warranted the presence of military operatives because I could find a number of police officers who were at some areas and they were even treated hospitably while the protests were on. So I didn't see reasons why you had army come there. But that said, I have to also look at the fact that um, the, the kind of representation and the impression created from the inconsistencies of the Nigerian military, as well as the Lagos State Governor, up until the time it seems as if they couldn't have any denials about the fact that there were deaths. Don't forget that Amnesty International Nigeria, uh, I spoke with uh, uh, Osai Ojigo, the Executive Director of Amnesty International Nigeria, and she said that certain things that they have shows that indeed people died and the denials or the inconsistency shows that they are something to, to hide, to paraphrase her. So if we look at all that are emanated from the side of government, I don't think that it's very okay. Then, then let's go to the issue of the camera. It is contrary to all we knew before. They removed one. When the governor was to speak about the cameras removed, he said that is for infrared to detect the number, of the, 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 the number plate of those who perhaps should have access without being delayed. In fact, if there was any night where they needed that camera most, it was the night they removed it to identify what vehicle came to somewhere. At least we were told that the military did not come working there. They moved in the vehicle. So they packed at some point. So if there was any night the camera removed would have been very important. It was the night that they removed it. And don't also forget, what is the justification for putting off a light at a place where people live, where people pass? That's another question for another day. Now, to tell me that the camera could not record beyond 8 p.m. is also another question. So I, I think that um, in this age and time, government must really be careful when it deals with people who are really technologically savvy. And I'm going to tell you this. Uh, from what Asai Ojigo told me, that was last week, she said that they are still analyzing the video. And she mentioned some things. They use coordinates. They use the metadata. It means it is difficult for you to say, something is not what it is if the metadata had been confirmed to be true. Then it is also difficult, except your mathematics is terrible and your geography is, is from hell. That is when you say the <laughs> coordinates are also incorrect. So those are basic things that I expect somebody who is rudimentarily good in mathematics to be able to confirm. So I think that what government has to do at this moment is to come very humbly and apologize for doing wrong to the people that want a better situation in the country, not for themselves alone, but for everybody, because we should understand that this is a matter in front of the international community. And the way we treat people matters. Don't forget that at times when we take our own as very inconsequential, it is a measure of weight that they will take. Look at what the US did also last week. They came into this country. They picked somebody that was there out of this country. Even if anybody is to go to US jail, they first of all tell you that the US is a country where the citizens cannot be trampled upon. Let me tell you one interesting thing about how the U.S. takes its citizen. If you're talking about one of the countries that helped to found the International Criminal Court in The Hague, the U.S. happens to be that. But the problem that the U.S. has been having with Alouf and Suda, um, you know, the person who is at the end, who's tenure will round up this year, the ICC, is simply because they feel you cannot be questioning authority, even if we know that the U.S. is wrong in certain areas. Now, if we move away from that, you also see that the U.S. has refused to sign and be a signatory where their citizens could be tried in The Hague for crimes committed in their country or in another country. For instance, part so of the... So are you, are you solely uh, encouraging that, um, that kind of... Um, no, no, no. I, I, I'm no, not under the law. No, no, no. I have only referred to the fact that the U.S., even when it does wrong, 
gives you the impression that well, we it's have still a, protecting its citizens. It's, it protects its citizens. It doesn't mean that, for instance, if you are talking about um, uh, the Price Water House, there was a particular um, accounting firm that did a lot of terrible things. The name just left me now. The U.S. sent its prison its citizens that didn't do right here. Okay. Send them to prison in their own country. Some of the Nigerians named in that particular criminal act are still walking about and acting as if they are the benevolent uh, people to others. Wow. So what I'm saying is, I think we must understand that when some okay. issues go beyond our borders and it involves the international community, don't forget that the Lagos State Governor was also on CNN, and some of the things he said then had contradicted the position we have right now, also by another agent of government, okay. which is the so, military. So, uh, as much as um, it's not a full court as a panel of inquiry, uh, we are not trying to no, influence we're just, no, exactly. No, 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 we can't. We no, I'm, just, I'm just putting the record to our yeah, viewers that yeah. we are not trying to influence their thought pattern and the, how the process should go. Yeah. But whatever is out there, it's okay for us to remind the panel to also let them know that um, this should be transparent as possible. And um, quite a lot of issues have come. I'm but, getting signal that we have to round off. Uh, but, but so then, I'll, I'll okay. just give you uh, probably 30 seconds okay. or one minute to look at um, how, what is your take about what some of the lawyers said? Yeah. That um, in the real sense of the word, this panel should not have a local standard because what's said about the governor and the governor is a party in this issue. That, that's another thing that um, people have actually talked about, that the governor is an accused in this matter. The Lagos State government is an accused in this matter. The military is an accused in this matter. So I was hoping that um, maybe an independent body, maybe the National Judicial Council, and don't should forget, set should, should set it up, and that the Lagos State governor, as well as, don't forget, they tell you that uh, you cannot actually uh, try somebody, but you can investigate the Lagos State Governor. You can tell him to come and make comments. It doesn't mean you're sending him to jail. If at all there's a verdict, maybe after a round of his tenure, he can and go face the law. So nothing stops him from being investigated. And don't also forget, one of the tricky things we find in this particular panel is, it's a crime committed by the executive arm of government at the federal level. The military belongs to the federal government. The police belongs to the federal government. So you don't, you don't, so, know, you don't so know accept I, I, the excuse I'm also of forces behind I'm, I'm, no, I'm, I'm also concerned that it is the state that are setting up panels of inquiry okay. for a crime committed by the agency of the federal government. Okay. So let us not miss out that, uh, that, that illogic and logic of who committed the Good. crime and who is setting up I the I think panel. the logic will be put on table and people will, will, will do justice to I that. So. I'm getting signal that they will put over our mic because mm -hmm. time is gone. All right. And uh, it's been quite uh, insightful. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Adini for, Ukunu, thank you for, for that me. short notice and you're able to come here. Thank you. We'll keep our videos to see what will happen in America and who becomes the president. And we also want to thank you for these insights. We pray and hope that uh, it will be useful for the panel and we'll get justice at the end of the day. Yeah. I will take a short breather. I'll be giving you my take on this. Please, I'll be back in a, in a while. Here is my take. Quite a lot of questions have been raised and they are right before the panel of inquiry. So many questions need answers. What exactly is going on? Is this a surreptitious move to cover up some of these issues, we'll keep tab and ensure that justice is not only served, but justice will be seen to have been served. Short as this take is, we'll keep tab with the inquiry from time to time. And trust us, Plots TV Africa will keep you up to speed on issues arising from that panel. And that's my take. Plus Politics returns tomorrow, same time, on the station and we'll be looking at fresh issues that are in the polity. I remain yours truly, Coyote Ladeini, saying bye for now.